<laughs> yeah, I own a Fairchild, the holy grail of compressors, in order to improve my life. That's why, that's why I bought it, and it, indeed it did. No. Just like, you know, yeah, Paul McCartney. I wanted my life to be like Paul McCartney's, so I got a Fairchild compressor. This is one of the, my first purchases in building out a small studio in my basement. And it was, uh, I think I'd asked a number of people more talented than I uh, what, uh, what, a, what a couple, three good compressors would be to get from my studio. I think I'd had my first regular come out and kind of been a hit. And so now I was getting all this work and I go, well, I've got to make my studio more like a real studio so maybe I'll buy a couple compressors and I bought some Neumann mics and I did th you know I bought a few things to make it a real studio and I just got people's advice on what to get and people you know one of the recommendations was a Fairchild compressor and of course I love Revolver is one of my favorite albums there is no better bass sound to me than the bass on Revolver and I and when I learned that was the compressor and model used on the bass on every song on Revolver. I was like, well, maybe I can find one of those. And I called some different people I knew, and I, I called Alan Sides, who would have a, I knew would have a lot of equipment. He's, you know, had a famous studio and was a famous engineer dude. And Alan's like, yeah, I got a couple of Fairchilds right now. One of them's great. One of them's a great one. He goes, you, you should get that one. I go, okay. So I go down, and I played with it. I listened to it. It even had a, you know, Alan would do this, he had a little tag hanging off of it with handwritten best written on it. And so I go, well, must be the best one, you know. And uh, it just sounded great and I got it. It seemed like a lot of money at the time, but in comparison to what they're worth now, it was not a lot of money. And it sounded amazing. It's been great. I've, I've uh, the two times I think that I've had to have it serviced, I made sure I got OEM parts had it made back to exact specs. So it's been lovingly cared for. And then one day my tech, Frank Lacey, came to the studio. This is, I was set up in Mississippi. He comes to the studio and he goes, oh, I, got, I brought you a picture. He goes, I just went to a trade show, a gear show and stuff, and uh, Mr. Fairchild was there. And he goes, I got him to hold the schematic for your model of Fairchild. And I took a picture of him and I want to put it on the front of your Fairchild. So that is Fairchild holding the schematic of this model and era Fairchild compressor. So. Yeah, it was one of those kind of, you know, if you know, you know kind of things. It's not like you'd have Adele into the studio and she's going to walk up and go, oh, that's Mr. Fairchild, you know, but you'd have the certain people who'd walk and go, oh, wow, that's amazing. He made that. You go, yep, he made that, you know. But it also seems to enhance uh, for my money, the way the low mid-range articulates in bass, and it's, that's just crazy useful. It's just, to, it's like where you, it nearly sounds like, say, a bass player is playing with their fingers. It sounds like you've gotten kind of more push or more articulation or drive from the fingers, right? But it's not trebly. It's not like 2K. It's not even 800 hertz. It's like it's doing it with the bottom. So now the bottom is, you're getting more kind of push of the articulation of bottom. And I mean, that's James Jamerson. That's Paul McCartney. That is what you want bass to do in a track. You want it to push the song in a way you don't necessarily hear. If you want to hear the bass and you want it to push the song, that's easy. You can just run it through an SVT or you can put it through a guitar amp or you can boost 3K. And you can hear a bass push a song more, but to feel a bass push a song more, really a weird thing to go searching for in a bass. It's like it, it can take real skill as an engineer to find that. But, a fair, but that's kind of, I think, part of what really made the Fairchild work. And you can go back and listen to Beatles records and you hear that. You think about it that way and you go, you know, why does this song move so good? And you go, you go back and listen and you go, well, Jeff Emmerich recorded it. And the bass is making the song move good, and it's Paul McCartney, and it's Paul McCartney through a Fairchild.